Hello, I'm Mike Harley, CEO of Environmental Initiative, and I use he, him pronouns. It is my great honor and joy to welcome you to this year's Environmental Initiative Awards. And I'm excited to introduce you to our first ever fully online celebration of innovative projects and bold leaders from around our state who are helping to build a healthier environment, a more prosperous economy, and a more equitable society. Like many of you, I have a special love for our annual awards event. And I know that I am not alone in my disappointment that we will not be able to gather in person for the celebration this year as we have for the past 26 years. But I'm proud to be part of an organization and a community who have found a creative way to responsibly celebrate these awards while sh showing due respect for the serious impacts of COVID-19 on human health and on economic security, and especially for those who are on the margins of our society and economy. Even in this time of necessary separation, the truth that is evident in the heart of these awards and in all of Environmental Initiative's work is that we remain interconnected and interdependent, and that it is in strengthening our relationships across all kinds of difference that we can find a way forward to better days. It is clear to me and to many of us that our economic, social, and environmental systems are made far too vulnerable by the divisions and disparities inside of those systems, and that this threatens the well-being of us all. And so I'm happy to say that those who we honor with this year's awards offer us a vision of a better future for all people and for the living world, a vision based on deep relationship, on the healing of division, and on powerful collaboration. So I'd like to invite you to take some time and explore this new website, learn about the stories of our honorees in their own words, and learn how you can support their work. I want to take a moment to thank our sponsors, without whom we could not do this work, and especially this year as they helped us pivot from an in-person event to this online celebration. I want to thank those who came together to evaluate our nominees and to select our honorees. And I want to thank all board and staff who contributed to the work. I especially want to recognize and thank Lily Benowitz, Christina Vang, and Damien Goebel, who were the core of our staff team that did the heavy lifting to put this program together and who are responsible for the content that you see on this website. And so without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to the winners of the 2020 Environmental Initiative Awards. Congratulations to all. 3M is a purpose-driven enterprise. We grow our business while collaborating to solve some of humanity's greatest challenges. We are happy to partner with Environmental Initiative, another purpose-driven organization, on their 2020 awards. I encourage you to learn more about all the nominated projects and their positive impacts in their communities. Congratulations to the award winners and thanks to all project nominees for working towards a healthy environment, a prosperous economy, and an equitable society. Hi. I'm Greg Archer, Manager of Environmental Services at Great River Energy. For those of you who don't know about Great River Energy, we're an electric co-op serving our 28 members across two-thirds of the state of Minnesota, or approximately 1.7 million people. Like the Environmental Initiative, our corporate structure is based around partnership and the collaborative model. Through it, our member cooperatives are constantly weighing rates, reliability, and environmental stewardship as our triple bottom line. There's obviously a tension between these three points. Because of the collaborative model, we're able to balance these three priorities to solve tomorrow's important challenges. GRE has been a proud sponsor of the Environmental Initiatives Awards for the last 14 years. Please join us in recognizing these important award nominees and winners. They too have struggled with diverse challenges, including environmental performance, economic, equity, and regulatory realities. In all instances, they were able to succeed because of their partnerships and because of their collaborations. This process is rarely easy and is always rewarding for those who are persistent. In short, Great River Energy appreciates your commitment to the process and congratulates you on your accomplishments. We get it. We're all beneficiaries of the collaborative model. We can't solve climate change on our own, and we also need to build a, a climate movement that everyone can see themselves in and that meets the needs and represents all of our communities. Um, and to be able to do that, we need to make sure that this movement is accessible for everyone and that people can see themselves reflected in it too. And so I think, you know, thinking about climate change, not just traditionally through like graphs or presentations, but through music and, um, 
you know, artistic expression, whether that's painting or sketches or photography, or I think there are so many cool ways that we can kind of celebrate awesome things that are happening in this movement, but also be able to process some of the, um, you know, heavy emotions and, and feelings that come with, um, come with the climate crisis too. So I feel like it's that, that art piece has been a really nice way to um, think about climate change in a new way and we've seen a lot of positive response from that too. I see myself as an organizer, as an activist, as a youth advocate, and there's nothing new about this. I've been doing this for 40, 50 years, you know, trying to get people to see that, you know, uh, community uh, first and that um, we, if we invest in the community, we are investing in ourselves. It was really through my community efforts as an advocate, as an organizer, that I was really given voice, that I really found my, my essence, my power, my gift. And it has been the lion's share of my passion and work in terms of trying to build resilient, healthy communities. By coming together, by, by collaborating together, you're learning together. Uh, you're asking uh, the difficult questions and um, uh, being able to, to gain knowledge uh, by sitting around the same table uh, and learning together. Another benefit for collaboration is it spurs people to take action. Meaning if you launch an initiative and maybe you were thinking uh, about doing uh, solar procurement at some point in the future, uh, by seeing that there is an initiative happening, it really spurs you uh, to take action, that, that this ought to be um, a priority uh, today. Collaboration has been at the heart of everything that we've done with the CREATE initiative. And part of it, it was to think about what a different model of doing academic scholarship looks like. One that actually takes collaboration really seriously and thinks about the fact that most of the urgent questions around the issues we're concerned with, environmental and social justice, are really better defined and articulated and experienced by communities outside of the university. And so collaboration for us meant thinking about a model of a project that really resourced community members to be the ones to articulate what are the research questions that matter most to them, what are the issues that they're facing, and then to realign our mission as a research institution and a research and education project to really fill those gaps, to resource those communities. Members. And then it also meant a willingness to be transformed by the needs of community members. Collaboration how, how SparkY looks at it and how we look at it is getting all voices at the table, having them come together and have a say in the direction and the results of achieving a goal, right? And in this case, collaboration was an incredibly necessary component of the SparkY Edison High School Green Campus. Come together across all of these siloed departments within the district and make what nobody would have thought possible happen, which is let's build a 20 foot high, 50 foot long aquaponic system in the auto garage, grow fish and plants in a symbiotic relationship to learn about science and then sell that food into the school program. That's how we define collaboration, coming together and making your future, your community's future, and really taking a global lens and acting locally to create that the world we want to see. Collaboration is just uh, the work that gets done to bring all of these people together. And when you do that work and you bring them together, uh, you end up hopefully being on the same page for the most part. I mean, everybody can see 
you learn, uh, you educate, you grow uh, by collaborating and in the, the broader you search, the more doors you open. So I just think collaboration is, is the key to getting these types of projects done. There was a lot of meetings and, and meeting with a lot of landowners. We knew what the problem was. We just had to figure out uh, you know, what the solution would be. And then of course, get funding to make that happen. So a lot of collaboration went forward on this project to, to get it done.